this Sunday, the feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of the Lord, we begin following our bishops, our pastors, a three-year period of time of Eucharistic revival, devotion and love of our Lord in the Eucharist. I can't help thinking of my father. Well, parents have great influence on their children. Sometimes a father or a mother, sometimes children will influence their parents. But in my case, I think of my father. He would come home late at night from work and maybe about midnight or 12.30, he would always stop by the church, St. Michael's in Memphis, and he would make a little five-minute visit. At that time, the doors, of, at least one door of the church, each church was open. We didn't have the problem of people breaking in and disrespecting the sacred, as unfortunately we do today. But he would make that little five-minute visit, kneel down, before our Lord, before the Blessed Sacrament, and always with the red vigil light there to the side. I can't help thinking that his Eucharistic love and devotion has had a profound effect on me and also on my brothers. And so that's really the way it should be. I'd like to speak now of what Jesus did at the Last Supper. Rather than following the way of the priesthood of Aaron, Moses' brother, and offer animal sacrifices to God for sin, which the book of Hebrews tells us clearly could not take away sin, Jesus rather followed the order or the line of Melchizedek. He is the priest that blessed Abraham, our father in faith, and he offered a sacrifice of bread and wine. How interesting, bread and wine. Jesus followed this example, this line, and indeed it was prophesied by King David in Psalm 110. That's today's psalm, so beautifully sung. You are a priest forever according to the line of Melchizedek. The line of Melchizedek, a priest forever, a prophecy concerning the Messiah. The Lord said to my Lord, this is verse 1, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right. The Lord, Jesus would later interpret in the Gospels, the Lord is David's Lord. And the Lord said to my Lord, that is the Messiah, you are a priest forever according to the line or order of Melchizedek. And so we see that Jesus embodied this prophecy, being the Messiah, this prophecy of Psalm 110. And he took the bread at the Last Supper and he blessed it. And he did the same with the wine and he blessed it. And he gave it to his apostles, saying, this is my body, this is my blood. And in doing this, he established the new and eternal covenant in his blood, in his body. This is no mere bread and wine. This becomes, therefore, thereby, a sacrifice of the new and eternal covenant, completely bypassing and putting to the side all animal sacrifices of old. Here we have something new, something different from what occurred in the Jewish temple at the time of Jesus. Day after day, animal sacrifices being offered. Day after day. And the people actually, beginning with the priest, would uh, take part in those sacrifices. They would eat part of those sacrifices, unless it was a whole earth offering, a holocaust. And so they would offer the animal sacrifices, and then part of that would go back to the priest, their portion, and the people. Well, in the New Covenant, we do the same thing. The priest offered a sacrifice. 
It is the bread and wine that Jesus offered to the Last Supper, according to the line of Melchizedek, the example of this priest that blessed Abraham and did the same thing, offering bread and wine. We do it here at Mass. And here's the amazing thing, is that you and I together are offering the sacrifice, and you and I together are partaking in eating the sacrifice that are reserved for us, so that we become completely caught up and become one with Jesus, who is the High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant. Well, let me give you another example of this. When you were baptized, the priest anointed you after you had the water poured over you and you were cleansed of your sins and made a member of the body of Christ. You had something else happen. Maybe we don't talk about it as much, but you were anointed on the top of your head or somewhere on your head with the sacred prism. And the words uh, of, of priest, prophet, and king were pronounced over you. Hence, a priestly dignity, a prophetic dignity, and a kingly dignity. Well, let me talk about the priestly dignity because whenever, after you were baptized, and then as an adult, or as a youngster, you were able to receive from the altar the bread of life, the sacrifice of the new and eternal covenant. When you receive our Lord, this priestly dignity takes effect. You become with the priest, me, Father David, Father Jonathan, our bishop who is a priest. You become with us, the ordained priest, a priestly people offering this sacrifice. You partake in it because you receive it. You receive the body and the blood of the Lord. Your life becomes mingled with that of the Lord. And indeed, your whole life, and this is the, the beautiful part of being a priestly people in considering the Eucharistic revival, all of us, and we speak of the common priesthood here, not the ministerial, but all of us together offer and partake in a priestly way this sacrifice of the new and eternal covenant. Our lives, your sorrows, sufferings, trials, your joys, your struggles, your, those wonderful things in your life, everything becomes connected and offered, caught up and given to God through Jesus Christ. Jesus offers and raises us before the Father as a pleasing offering. You are a priest forever according to the order or line of Melchizedek. That doesn't refer just to the ordained ministerial priest, the celibate priest, but rather also to the priestly people. All of us are priests forever according to the line of Melchizedek, offering bread and wine, receiving the bread, receiving the wine, which is Jesus' body and blood, the totality of himself, our lives being caught up so that the whole body of Christ dies and rises. You are the body. I am part of the body of Christ. Jesus is the head. All of us die and rise with Jesus. We are crucified to this world. We, are, we die to our sins and we rise to new life in this wonderful, wonderful sacrament we call the Holy Eucharist, the bread of life, the sacrifice of the new and eternal covenant, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.